what can happen in the service now webinar can uh, what we'll go through in this is basically get an introduction of service now get no uh, get to know how you can get a service now instance and there is no installation required guys in service now so you can get an instance free of cost if it is a personal development instance so and what exactly is ITSM, ITOM, ITAM, and ITBM? So there are different different modules in ServiceNow. So we would be just giving in highlights of these four modules. There's two, three modules more in it. And then we'll go through the incident management, uh, just a highlight of it, and what kind of steps we follow in incident management, key roles in incident management, and then what are the ServiceNow applications which is available out of box, which is given by ServiceNow, and what you can do by yourself. Uh, we will also venture upon the career scope in ServiceNow, what you can go forward and what kind of certifications you want to do. You can pursue uh, based on your interest. Okay. So, so basically when we say ServiceNow, ServiceNow is a cloud platform um, and it, it basically has integrated different IT processes, be it a strategy, be it design, transition, operations, Everything is under one umbrella, and that is for in ServiceNow cloud, cloud cloud platform. So it is trying to provide everything in one platform rather than having distributed applications for each of the IT processes' purpose. And by centralizing all the data in one particular platform, it is, you know, making uh, the productivity and the efficiency. Uh, it is increasing the efficiency and productivity of all type of business users. So if you have, uh, it can be used in healthcare, insurance, banking, in any of your, any of the business users can use this particular thing. So the main concept of ServiceNow is, is trying to have all the kind of IT processes in one platform. So that's the main integrate thing which is so powerful that ServiceNow is selling because of this reason that it is having everything under one umbrella. Okay. So let me go forward and I'll just give an introduction that ServiceNow was introduced, was founded on 2004 and uh, the main thing what was focusing at that time was ITSM, basically IT service management. Uh, it was tr it was in a competition with BMC Remedy, and it has somehow surpassed BMC Remedy for sure. So uh, ServiceNow was first for catering for only ITS and needs of the clients or the customers, but later it started venturing upon more areas, be it security, uh, HR operations, HR delivery, uh, operations, customer services, and now it is dealing with automations and other stuff. So the the Next releases are actually dealing with automation releases, okay? And um, ServiceNow usually, as any other platform, is dealing with uh, whatever new uh, new things it, it is introducing or whatever is existing, it is, if you want to enhance it, it goes for releases. And its releases is based on the city names. Or city names. Basically, right now, ServiceNow has released a new release, which is called as Orlando. We are in Orlando right now, and uh, previous to it, it was New York. So it goes with alphabetical order, and it alphabetical order city-wise alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, um, Swati, I have one question. Um, like after uh, the series ends of alphabets, like from A to Z, so yep. what would be the plan of service now to continue with? Uh, that's that's on service now. Maybe they'll again start with A to Z, and they'll start with new. Uh, Cities because there are a lot of cities with A to Z. So right now they they use Istanbul, so they would use anything else uh, which comes with I. Maybe they use Italy or something like that. It depends on them, so how they want to release it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So if somebody knows about cloud platform, so cloud platforming works in two ways. Okay, either it could have an architecture of multiple in, multi instance, or it is a multi tenancy. Okay. So what happens is when you have a common data center, okay, so ServiceNow is giving you, is a pass, so basically platform as service cloud model. What it means is that it will give you infrastructure, it will give you everything to set up your data. You have to just know what kind of applications you want to develop, if you want to develop. If you don't want to develop a custom application, you can use ServiceNow as is because it gives you the whole package, okay. So when the data centers are given, are there, and the data are there, 
Okay, so the data can have multi-tenancy option. Basically, multiple people can access the same instance. Okay, or it could be that each person will, each individual will have one instance. So ServiceNow is promoting its multi-instance architecture so that whatever data you have, only you will have in your instance. Okay, so suppose if you have a personal instance, whatever data you are creating there, I will not be able to access it. So that's the kind of privacy that's the kind of a holistic approach ServiceNow is doing for by promoting multiple multi-instance architecture okay and as I said you before that it is a cloud solution so it is an integrated cloud solution okay now any other question guys should we can we move to the next slide do you have any other questions you want to ask about the introduction of ServiceNow okay so let's go for the next slide okay Okay, this is a pictorial diagram and this is taken from the ServiceNow site itself, as you can see here. Okay, so as I said to you that right now, uh, I guess from New York release, that is just previous to this release, they are kind of focusing on what is hot in market. Which are, uh, the, the things which is hot in market is automation, machine learning and AI, right? So they are they are kind of leveling up their game and you know introduce uh, they have introduced intelligent automation engine. So if you can see here, so they are uh, you know relying on machine learning. They're using a basic principle of uh, uh, machine learning, which is not shown to us as such. Okay? So for anomaly detection, for predictive modeling, and other stuff. Okay, and it is catering to IT, security, customer service, HR, and business apps. For business apps, it, it can be an out-of-box service now business app, or it could be your own customized business app. And to uh, facilitate these um, these sectors, it is using service portal. It is using notifications. Notification is basically email or push mails, what you get. Okay, and so. Um, any incidents or if you think anything you have raised, so the customer should get uh, prompt answers where exactly we are in our uh, incident management or incident process, for example. So uh, we are getting not we are sending notification to them time to time on the basis of uh, the progress of incident, for example. And we have a knowledge base so that a customer can get inside or then user can get inside and get an answer instead of raising a report uh, anomaly to the service tickets as such. We have catalog items which wherein you can order some catalog items. Basically, if you want to add, uh, if you are, suppose if Apple is using ServiceNow, so if you want to order an Apple iPad, so you can do it by using a service catalog as such. Okay. You have workflows, you have reports and dashboards, which is very important for the leadership to, you know, see where we are exactly to get the collective data in a report, in a, in a pictorial format. So we have that also. And the important thing is that we have a single database. So the data centers is having that database, and the database which is used in the behind the scenes is MySQL. Okay. Uh, we have many other things. We have orchestration also. So as I said you this before, this is multi-instance, uh, secure and compliant. It's, it is for, as it's a cloud component, a cloud cloud platform so many people have this question whether it's secure or not so it is giving a lot of focus for its security and it is very secure and compliant okay and it is also scalable that's for sure okay let's go for the next slide guys so as I said you that service now does not need anything to be installed in your computer as such okay if you have a desktop or a laptop or anything and you want service now you want to just try out service now you need not install anything in your computer or desktop. That's the beauty of it. So what you can have is, so how would you get a ServiceNow instance? So as I said to you that each person will get a personal instance that is free of cost. Okay. But when I say free of cost, um, you would get everything, whatever you want to. You want to experiment something, yeah, it's fine. But as a company, you would have to buy instances based on your, how we go forward, right? We have a development to be done and then we go for testing and then we go for production so you will have three or four instances for a few for sub dev, uh, sub production instances and one for production instances okay so that is on company base and but for us as a if you just want to fiddle around uh, the service now you can get a free personal instance and the basic thing what you have to do is there are three steps to do okay you have to log in to developerservicenow.com i have already registered so i have got an instance but still 
So what you have to do is you have to go to developer.servicenow.com and then you will get a manage instance. But now they have changed their format. So your instance, if you can see here, I have highlighted it, okay? So you would get your instance and you can actually request instance instead of refresh status, okay? So you can get a request instance. There's a button. You can just click on it and then you can go for registration. Firstly, you have to register in developer.servicenow.com as I have registered, guys. I have signed in, okay, by my Gmail ID. And you can do the same. Once you get your, uh, once you log in into developer.servicenow.com, once you request a new instance, you will get, you have to just click on this instance. And then, you would have to give a password, a unique password for your admin user, okay? So as a default, for your personal instance, you are an admin, okay? So uh, the username will always be admin and the password will be the password what you are giving, a unique password for yourself, okay? And you can log in. And this is how ServiceNow looks like. So I'm just loading on the name. This is how ServiceNow looks like, and uh, still loading. Up. This is a home page, and you can actually modify your home page according to the business requirements and other stuff. Yeah. So let's start with different modules of ServiceNow. So basically, ServiceNow has different different modules, uh, which caters for different requirements of the business. Uh, for example, a, uh, a business can be only dealing with ITSM, that is uh, IT service management, then it can only go with ITSM module and go for it. Uh, so let's start with ITSM, guys, because it's a common one and it is available as soon as you have a personal instance of service now. Yeah. This is a free of cost kind of thing which is available for us. What ITSM does is it is basically processing um, it is basically managing your incident and problem management. It is basically managing the change management, request and knowledge management. It's dealing with reports and dashboards. Suppose if you have an incident process, if you're using uh, different, different tools for managing your change management, uh, creating problems, creating incidents, working on requests, so everything can be clubbed together and worked in ITSM. So it is catering mainly for incident problem management, change management, and it will go through all the business processes. Okay? So if I go for incidents, right? You can just click on incidents. And if you can see here, you can get all the incidents which is available in your personal instance. And this is available out of box, so you need not do anything about it. Okay? And uh, you can just open anything, desktop not working, I will open this instance. So basically, it goes through the workflow, what usually a business process workflow goes through. Okay? It could be different for different uh, companies, and you can uh, work with customizing your incident process as much as possible. So you can take this base and customize it according to your business needs, and it's very simple to customize it. Let's go to the next slide. I will cover in, in incident management uh, in ITSM incident management in the later slides so that you can get a better picture of it, yeah? The next one is ITOM. Basically, if you have an operations, right, uh, each company will have operations uh, in which they will be having, yeah. Any questions, guys? Uh, in ITOM, uh, do we also consider uh, CMDB? Yes, ITOM basically deals with the CMDB uh, database is available in ITSM itself free of cost. But loading the CMDB dealt with ITOM, basically operation management. So when you say about operation management, basically it is trying to figure out where is your uh, CI, it's basically configuration item. Configuration item could be your desktop or uh, laptop or the telephones in your uh, company. So it would be anything, okay? So anything could be comprising of CM CI's configuration item. And uh, so what it does is... Uh, in operation management, it will fetch all the, so I'll just cover one, one thing, okay? So in ITOM, you will get discovery, even management, orchestration, and service mapping, okay? When I talk about discovery, as a term suggests discovery, right? 
So basically, it will try, it will try to ping all the systems what is available in your ecosystem, the company's ecosystem, and you know what? It will find out. Okay, fine. Is this, uh, for example, a laptop? Okay, the, is this laptop uh, registered to my company, or is it a subcontractor's? Com- uh, is it available for subcontractor or something like that? And it will find out what are the installed applications and everything. So discovery will do that and fetch the data from all over uh, your ecosystem, company's ecosystem, and pull it in CMDB CI. Now CMDB CI is a parent table, and you will have a child table also, basically categorizing it in hardware, software, and what kind of configuration item it is. So that's the later thing what will happen. Okay. And event management is basically if an event is triggered, basically if any uh, thing is not working, so you will raise an event, right? So it automatically have a, has a dashboard to figure out if it's there is a need of maintenance or what, or is it in the maintenance? Basically, if each uh, operations will have a maintenance uh, scheduled maintenance, right? It will give that also that you know what this particular thing is in say scheduled maintenance, and that's the reason it will not be available from this time to this time. Even management could do other things also, like if something is failing, if something is not working, it will just register in a dashboard fashion and it will, it will make it available faster so that people will know, okay, fine, this is not working well, so my service guys will be fixing it faster. And as it is in the same system, so it is much faster, you know, because everything is interlinked as such. Uh, orchestration is just an, uh, just, um, um, a step ahead of the operation management as such. Okay. And service mapping and discovery usually goes in uh, hand in hand. Basically, you can use a discovery or a service mapping based on what kind of approach you want to go for. Is it a top-down or a, a bottom-up approach? So it's a, it's a it's kind of algorithm uh, that you have to go forward with. Okay. So uh, the thing is, Everything is having ITSM as an existing base, okay? And ITOM, ITBM, everything is an added feature for in ServiceNow. As I said, you that ServiceNow was introduced with ITSM, and now everything else is coming up on top of it. Now, why I said you on top of it is basically it it is related to the licensing now. ITSM will have a lot of things which is free of cost. ITOM is a licensed um, module, and you have to buy the license. And it is for each instance as such. Okay. Let me go for the next one, that is asset management. Asset is a very important thing in IT, and it deals with all the financial, contractual, inventory details. So what happens is, uh, every company will have inventory somewhere, okay, and it will be having a note of what are, what are the hardware available, what are the devices available in it and whom it has been assigned to. And once a comp- well, a basic example is, an employee is having a laptop assigned to that person, okay? An employee leaves the organization and hands over the uh, laptop to the IT department, okay? And now, that hard, uh, now this particular laptop is available for anyone else to fetch it. But if your inventory is not strong enough, if, if your inventory details are not stored well enough and the management is not done properly, people will not know that this laptop is actually available for them. And maybe it will just go unused. The same thing goes with other examples also. Um, like if you have a cable, if you have a mouse available. So it's not just for the availability thing, but just the whole process of asset provisioning and inventory management, which can be done in asset management of service now very easily. Yeah, it gives more of a dashboard and other stuff also, but this is what it does. Any questions, guys, till now, or shall I proceed further? No questions. Okay, fine. Perfect. Okay. Um, so let's go for the next slide, guys. So the next module is the business management. Now, this module is very important for actually handling the project as such. So now, for any IT company is either working in a, it's, it's a bit difficult to write now, term it as, many guys have moved to agile right now, but still waterfall models are used, okay? There are two, two kinds of management what we do, okay? Waterfall is that we will have a certain time given by the, given to the customer. Suppose if customer says, I want this product to be developed, I my management will say, you know what, it will take six months time. 
and in between we don't we just don't interact with the with the customer as such we will follow the life cycle of the application basically the requirement gathering um developing unit testing then regression testing and everything is done and at the end the product is given to the customer after 6 months uh and maybe the uh, maybe the person who actually did a requirement gathering did a mistake and you know what they will say this is not the product i wanted i want a, a different product so the 6 months is wasted so you have to again go forward with it so many of you guys would have faced this this issue so this is called as a life this is called as a waterfall model okay and there's another module which is called as agile model which is really in now so either you will be using scrum or either you will be using kanban a combination of scrum and kanban so many other things so as a business as a management okay business management it's very important for us to have that kind of whole process basically manage real stuff what we want to do um uh, creating a financial manage basically the financial charts uh figuring out the costs and other stuff and agile means finding out how many resources you have resource management uh sprint cycles and other stuff so these all things can be you know catered well in itbm so if your organization deals with obviously every organization has a project management in place and for them for having a lean a methodology followed in your company you can actually use itbm which will give different sectors different sections of what a manager does in day to day life it could be project and portfolio management basically resource management as such okay and agile delivery execution basically if one resource is used in one sprint cycle maybe i'm not using that particular resource into some other sprint cycles so in that way so these all plannings can be done easily in service now itself and the advantage is that service now will have stories now when i say stories it is user stories guys and it is used in scrum methodology okay agile methodology as such so uh, for manager it's very easy to check out okay fine these are the stories uh, assigned to this particular person so i will not be involving that particular because that person is exhausted so i will not take uh, him or her to another sprint i will just take somebody else so that is that easy for a manager to track or a scrum master to track as such okay so this is what is uh, which will be this is what will be it itbm catering to as such okay so this is mostly dealing with strategizing and business management so after i cover this slide can you see that how much is service now providing in one platform itself it is catering to business management it is catering to operation management it is dealing with itsm and it is also dealing with asset management and it deals with many other things if you can see hr customer service security so these is many other things and it's a beautiful platform as such um what i have uh, what uh, this picture shows is basically what it is covering in itsm what is covered in itom so someone asked me about the cmdb right cmdb table is available in itsm but filling it can be done with itom okay then we have itbm wherein you have tests and other stuff you have software asset management you have many things suppose if hr if you want to give an example okay um hr is basically if uh, it could deal with offboarding and onboarding and employees okay there's a basic thing what what comes into hr kind of thing when we remember right so the whole process can be done in service now itself so hr need not have the the excel sheets or um, they need not you know make us fill all the forms how we fill it in the paper right they did not do it if they have service now intact with them so hr can do these all things online itself so that's the basic thing what we have okay there's another thing which is very beautiful which was introduced by service now it is automated test framework so if someone is from a testing background and uh, they are doing manual testing very less people are right now focusing on manual testing if you want to go for automated testing we have jasmine selenium and other stuff right so service now is catering for automated testing also by using atf uh it uses jasmine in behind the scenes let's focus more on incident management so we are just uh, taking one of the topics of service now so let's take incident management as such then whenever a customer or an end user gets an issue they want it to be 
resolved as soon as possible, right? Even when we get an issue, maybe in a broadband, maybe my Wi-Fi is not working. I don't want a lot of delay in it. I don't want to, you know, it, it should not go from one person to another team to another team for a long time, right? It, it, it creates issues. So, the way instant management is defined in service now is so much user friendly that the the end user would get notification at, may have, at the, from the time it, they have created an incident to the time they have resolved the incident. And with the AI, with the predictive analysis, if the if the incident is a similar kind of incident is raised again and again and again, they would be you know figuring out the actual answer and giving it back to the end user without you know transferring it to the level one or level two. So from the service desk, desk itself, you'll get the resolution and it will go back to it. Okay. If you want a root cause analysis, obviously if you have multiple incidents with the, for the same issue, you can club them out and you can create a problem and you can work on problem. That is a problem management as such in service now. So when I say about end user benefit, it is rapid service restoration and user friendly services interactions. Just because we have chatbots in place, we have knowledge base in place, we have service desk equipped with the predictive analysis. If an incident comes like my uh, Wi-Fi is not working, so at least it will give the first two, three steps quickly to the end user so that they can just check it out and they can give the information. And even if after that it's not working, they'll raise an incident for um, on behalf of the end user. Okay. And even as an IT sector, it is very much fast to find out the root cause and minimize the issue of reoccurrences. Go to the next one. Basic steps. This is a basic steps, guys. This can be different for different organizations. Okay. The basic steps are same, but how you are assign me, assigning it, how you are investigating, it is different for the different uh, organization as such. So when a breakdown happens, you can you have to report an incident. Okay. And then the managing of incidents, basically assessment. Uh, the assessment, as I said, you can be happening from a level one, uh, level one team. But the beauty is that ServiceNow is having predictive analysis to do the assessment. So you need not have a level one team as such. It can be done automatically. Assignment. So again, level one team will assign after assessment. It will give uh, give the tickets to the particular teams. But even this is has been automated by ServiceNow by using a advanced work reassignment. Okay. And then you can investigate. Investigation is an uh, it has to be done by a user. So, it, uh, whoever, whichever team is assigned to this particular uh, incident, they can actually investigate and go for resolution of the incident. And once the incident is resolved, the notifications will go to the users and they can check and they can say whether it has been actually resolved. If not, then it, they can actually go back to the whole cycle that is reopening the whole incident and going back to the site. Once you're working on these incidents, okay, uh, if a manager wants to figure out how many incidents have been assigned to this particular person and how was the reassignment count of that person, everything, all the reporting is given by ServiceNow itself. So the reporting and dashboards are very much easy when you're using ServiceNow as such. I'll take a break um, and discuss more on the roles in incident management. Uh, when this is the roles integrate to ServiceNow inside ServiceNow, okay? If every, anyone knows about ITIL, this is a basic principle of incident management or ITS and as such, right? So on that principle itself, we have a role which is ITIL, which deals with opening, updating, closing incidents, closing problems, working on changes, configuration management items, etc. ITIL admin is just like a team lead, okay? It will have a team re lead role. It will have ability to delete some incidents, okay? Which we don't have access as an ITIL user. Major incident manager. Basically, how would you find out whether this incident is actually a very, very major incident? A incident manager, whoever is having a major incident manager, is the only person who can categorize a particular incident into major and accordingly get the preference over the other incidents in the life cycle of the incident. Okay. 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 Okay, guys, I'll take a break here. If if you have any other questions still there, uh, you can ask me to the previous slide. No questions? Okay, then. So uh, let's let's go forward and see what service now applications are. 
basically as i said you the service now by itself provides many out of box applications and there are many applications which you can create by yourself that is for custom applications okay suppose if your sister, your application is dealing with your organization is dealing with purchasing as such okay uh they are in retail business and they are dealing with purchasing now service now does not have purchasing module as such so you can actually by yourself create an application for purchasing and create the whole you utilize the existing tables and existing functionality of service now and go forward if you had a purchasing uh, application created obviously you'll get virtual agent basically a chatbot and few of the things which is already existing in service now free of cost for yourself so you need not actually develop a chatbot by yourself okay so that's the advantage of having a scoped applications uh, why would you create a scoped applications in service now right you can create in java and other stuff but in that way you have to do everything by yourself have a chatbot have the integrations and everything but here you'll get many of the things free of cost for yourself like virtual agent basically virtual agent is a chatbot okay uh which deals with uh, having 24 by 7 self service and it is uh, it is it will have the use cases and it will give the answers very quickly you can actually extend the chatbot by writing more integrations okay you can actually give more intuitive answers based on your requirement so you can actually customize the virtual agent also similarly the predictive intelligence as i said you that uh right now data science and ai is is in machine learning is in right now so we have predictive intelligence basically to categorize and route issues to the right resolution teams so this particular part use this to automatically categorize and route issues to the right resolution team it was not done automatically and it is not done automatically in many organization till now they use l1 uh, service team basically they have a group of five or six people who would be actually checking out the short description and they'll be sending that uh, sending to that particular team assuming that's the right thing and uh, what happens is basically it could be if a new person has joined the l1 team and they don't know the by the short description whether they have sending the correct team or not there could be a a lot of free assignment of the same incident and cause frustration to the customer as such when you automate the whole thing you need not worry about uh, who is the new person who, uh, about there is less dependence on the use uh, um, human that such okay but for ha this to happen you should have your historical data and the historical data um, uh, quality should be really good only then the predictive intelligence can combine okay there are many other applications but i felt that these two applications are really in and they are kind of enhancing these two applications a lot there are there is other application also called as guided tour okay basically when you create an application and you give to the end user many times what happens is the customer does not understand what you have done in your application so what you do you go for sprint review and at that time you teach them you know what if you want to create a particular thing you have to go like this you have to click this icon you have to go here so you give this whole thing manually and you teach them right that can and if the if a user does not attend your sprint review and later point of time the person try wants to try it out you have to they have to again get in touch with your team to find out how the system works out or they have to get in contact with someone who was there in the review to get get a feel of what you have developed as such right but if you had uh, now service now has guided guided tools so basically as the name suggests it's a guided tool okay so you can develop the guided tool after your system after you have developed your application and give give that particular thing to the uh, to the user and you know by your by themselves they can just click on the guided tool anytime they want to and it can be automatically showing what exactly they have to do for creating an incident for example i'm giving a simple example as to the name okay so that is how beautifully uh, applications have been developed in service now which is out of box available for us so we need not actually write that particular code also let's go for the career scope okay guys right? so now career scope is is for you guys to decide in which field uh, of service now you are interested in if you want to go for administration basically managing the already existing applications already developed applications do a bit of maintenance like do a bit of configurations and other stuff you can go for administrators okay if you want to think about 
process as such you are very good business analyst and you want to go for you know using your knowledge uh, business knowledge and explaining the development team you know how to cater it in the service now that can be if you are interested in that particular area then you have to go for implementers okay they are called as implementers now developers developers as, as such can customize service now as much as possible they can actually uh, configure and customize it by using scripts and by using custom applications they can create custom applications they can do many other things in development sector the last but not the least testers okay so testers can utilize the service now by for using the automated test framework there is also test management as such in itbm okay so if you are going for a manual testing itself you can go for test management also there is a different module for that but if you want to automate the testing framework as such you can go for adf or automated test framework okay so there is a service now caters for both manual and automated test okay so now based on your area of interest you can do the certifications accordingly so if you are interested in administration you can do csa that is certified system administrator okay and if you want to go for implementation specialist now implementation specialist will be for a specific area of implementation for example if i am interested in discovery so i will be doing an implement i'll be i'll be taking a certification for discovery implementation only so it is that specific okay uh, and then we have a certified application developer that is for the application developers as such you can do uh, certifications for that each one of them has some prerequisites to be completed before you take a certification as such okay with that i think we have come to the end of the slides um now we are open for any questions guys if you have any questions anywhere in any of the slides you can um, come forward and ask me right now uh swati i have one question um uh, as per your experience and uh, yeah. me and like what is the weightage uh, uh what service no security operations over itom let me go back okay I Tom and what was the other thing? Security operations. Security operations basically deals with vulnerabilities and you know security uh, aspect as such. And I right now as uh, in India, what I'm seeing is I Tom is picking up the pace. Security is a very difficult thing. Security operations, very few people are doing it, and you should have some background in security operations as such to you know venture in security operations. because you are dealing with threat, uh, intelligence uh, threat intelligence risk risk analysis auditing so if you are in that background then you can venture in security operations but usually guys are now going for itom mostly in in the industry because mostly operations are done either by manually or they are just uh, done by some legacy applications so they are converting they are basically uh, trans transitioning from that legacy application into service now So they're just phase, phasing the legacy application and going for operation. Okay. So, so item is uh, very booming. If I talk specific about India, so the job openings are more uh, as compared to security operations. Mm. Yes, that's for sure. Yes, but majorly ITSM. If you have ITSM knowledge and if you are interested in development, yeah, that's that's in now because uh, item is dealing with. Um, it deals with licensing right it has licensing angle so it yeah, the company has to pay some amount to get item in their instances so what they are doing is uh they are taking itsm just itsm and they are creating custom applications to cater their operations sometimes yeah so if i want to learn itom so is it necessary to have a development background uh, not fully development background but yeah you should know the operations as such uh you should be good in your operations you should know what is uh, what, what do you call about mid servers what is um, middleware in between your uh, two applications how would you interact with these two applications um and other stuff yeah so you should be good in that particular area okay 
So basically, if I want to choose uh, to learn any one module as compared to both the modules, so I should go with ITOM as compared to Secure Corporation, right? So ITOM is uh, more yeah. in demand. Yeah, more in demand. Yeah, security operations, very few people are doing right now. It's a good thing to learn though, but if, if you have a security background as such, then it's really good thing to go for security operations. It's interesting. Oh. Okay, because I also saw there are very less openings into the market in terms of security operations talking over yeah. India. Yeah, so because, open. yeah, so because security, op as I said you, that is an interesting topic, but you should have a vast experience in security operations before service now. If you have a good business knowledge, if you would have done security operations, not in service now, but somewhere else, then you can, you know, take that knowledge and take in service now as such. But if you don't have any background of security, then People don't, you know, prefer and prefer someone mm -hmm. who does not have a background in security. And any prerequisite pre background required for ITOM, only ITSM would be the prerequisite for ITOM. ITOM. See, ITOM and ITSM can, uh, yeah, ITSM is a prerequisite for ITOM and both of them need, require some knowledge in scripting. It, yeah. Especially ITSM, we need scripting knowledges. So modules are divided for a customer perspective, okay? But scripting and development is for any of your modules. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the basic scripting, what you can do inside service now, then you can't cater mm -hmm. anything as such. You can't cater item or you can't cater ITSM. This is division done in a holistic way for the business. But underlying thing is, it is using MySQL, it is using uh, Glide Records, it is using Glide Ajax. It is ba basically using scripting and uh, MySQL database. So you should be as, so again, it depends on which area you want to venture, what kind of roles you want to take, okay? Your career scope, it depends, depends on that. Basically, if you want to go for as an administrator, uh, administrator in ITOM, or implementer in ITOM, or developer in ITOM, or a tester in ITOM. So accordingly, your, uh, Area, according to your area of interest, the amount of scripting would differ. So I just missed that one uh, related to the job. So actually, uh, I'm into the like uh, I teach the developers part uh, right now. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, right now I'm I created. I'm in the uh, application development in the service now. So how will be the job opportunity uh, for the developers in the service now? Maybe I missed that I, one. Right now, ServiceNow developers are in the, the job market is really good for ServiceNow developers and architects as such. Even administrators for that matter. It's really good. It's really good for them. And in testers, ATF, many people don't know ATF, so it is really good for them also if you have, uh, if you have equipped in ATF. So with developers and ATF combination, yeah, you're really good because when you're doing a development, right? When you're doing a development, regression mm -hmm. testing and when, you, when it goes for upgrading, okay? Upgrades yeah. and all is done by a combination of administrators and developers. So if in the upgrades, if you don't know about ATF, it can be a back, uh, back foot for you. So if you have ATF, you can automatically run, uh, your test suite and find out whether your uh, system is working fine or not after an upgrade. As simple as that. Upgrade is basically release to release, okay? Once you were moving from New York to Orlando, that's called as an upgrade. Okay? Uh, just so if somebody does not know that. Uh, you told about this uh, predictive intelligence, right? Yes. Um, uh, that is supported in this Orlando release or like it is supported from the previous release as well? It was there from the previous release. Um, I'm just confused with New York or the just before that release. But for sure New York, right? And uh, it, what, what ServiceNow does is, like any other development guys, okay? Um, they first introduce a concept. They give a, a, a basic version of any of the applications. Like predictive intelligence, the basic version of it was sketched out in New York or before New York really, just before New York. Really. Just don't remember that, but New York for sure. So what it does is, it gave a basic uh, overview, means basic version of relative intelligence, and then they enhanced that particular application with the coming releases. So Orlando is having more features, which is added in predictive intelligence. Okay, but as okay. I said, you the predictive intelligence will only work if your organization has a very good historical data. The data quality should be good for doing a predictive analysis, right? Otherwise, uh, it will not work out. Uh, if your data is not good, it will not work out. So data science basically deals with that 
So if you have a good data, historical okay. data, you can actually work on creative intelligence. It's a very good tool to work on. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, uh, so there were a lot of uh, versions, right? So uh, how yeah. those are different? Like, uh, is there feature differences between the versions or what is it? So each, for each release, there are feature differences. If they want to, see, it's, it's the same thing like we do in the, our development cycles, right? If you have developed an application, you can add new features in your next release. You'll just so first send version name. one. Okay. okay. Sorry? It's a feature name, that's all, right? No, no. See, what happens is for each... Um, Sorry, version name. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, it's like a version name, right. So, they're just yeah. giving version name in a beautiful way like Orlando or New York so that everyone... It will be a common one. So otherwise, version 1.4, it could be different for each of you, right? That's so, it's... Like, yeah. Uh, they're, naming yeah. It. yeah. they're naming it. Basically, they're bundling all the existing features and if there, in, if there is any enhancement in the existing features, if there are any bugs in the existing features, and if they want to introduce any new features, okay? So they're combining everything and sending it to new release. Yeah? What's the latest one? New Orlando. 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 Okay. So, uh, while pre while requesting for the PDA, so ca can we pick them? Uh, it, it will yes. give the latest version or? Uh... No, it will give three versions. Ah. Uh, it will give New York, it will give Orlando and, and the previous one. Oh. So, before yeah? to Orlando, it's New York, right? Yes. Yes. Do you also take training? Yes, so we were coming on that, yeah. So if you have, if you are interested after, after the ServiceNow webinar, if you got interested in ServiceNow and if you want to go for any training, you can actually contact MindMagic and yeah, we, we go for training. I will give training for that. So it depends on which sector you want to go for. If you want to go for administrator, uh, you can see MindMagic uh, that you want to go for administrator, developer, anything, okay? Uh, I would like to go with ITOM. You want to go for ITOM? Yeah, so we, I can go for ITOM. Um, yeah, we can go for that. But the problem is that it is not free of cost, so uh, I have to think about the logics. But yeah, we can go for it. Yeah. No, definitely because uh, the upgrade uh, training. Uh, so, so if let's say if I choose you as my trainer uh, in terms of ITOM, uh, yeah. so what you will cover exactly? All four modules, or at least specifically one module like discovery or service mapping. I can cover all the four because if I if you're dealing with item, it's all the four, right? So I have covered. Uh, I am a certified system administrator. I have done application developer also, and then I went for certified implementation specialist. And I have done implement. I have run discover. I've taken discovery as my implementation. So yeah, so we can have different things associated with it. Okay. Um, but discovery and service mapping, I can go for discovery and service mapping and other stuff also. But yeah, my specialization is in discovery, so yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so can we go one by one, like like say if I am specifically studying this uh, for job mm -hmm. change I if I go for one module that is discovery, and I am very much sure that I am okay with discovery, and I should get job, and later on I can go with second module, event management or service management. Will that do, or do I need to complete all the things at one go and search for a job? It's better to have the combination of discovery and service mapping. Because if you want to suggest, as I said, you there, there are two approaches, okay? There's a top, top down approach and a bottom up approach, okay? Mm -hmm. So, when, when you're dealing with discovery and service mapping, there are two different approaches. And when you're suggesting a company, you have to give both the approaches to them to choose, right? Mm -hmm. Or to work. If you're just working as a developer out there, if you just join the team of ITOM, then you have to know both the technologies, both the modules. They could be working on discovery. They could be working on service mapping. So you should know both of them to venture on ITOM, right? The last question from mine. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's say I have experience of two years into a Vishnu admin, and okay. uh, I would like to change uh, the job, and yeah. I would like to go with ITOM domain, and uh, I learn discovery uh, from you. And I don't yeah. have any experience into the discovery, uh, nothing previous background. So let's see if I complete the course and I am very much perfect uh, theoretically. So should yeah. I jump into the market? So they will ask me about the experience specifically into the discovery or theoretical part. I can explain them and get a job. Uh, 
uh, it depends on the companies uh, to be very frank i i will not say that just the uh, just the theoretical one will work out you should have some experience in it also but it also def- uh, it all depends on the companies also because service now resources are so few that sometimes mm-hmm. if you just have a theoretical knowledge people are taking and uh, you know trusting you that you were if given a you know a project you will be trying to pick it up at least you are good in theoretical one so it depends on company to company i can't comment that yeah i can't comment on that as such okay okay no problem thank you all modules will have the developers right yeah all modules see any module to uh, to progress further is having development so if you have if you go for uh, see when you give a training right you can either go for apply administrators or uh, developers okay and if you are good in develop if you got the development gist of it then you can develop any of the modules you can work on any of the modules as a developer yeah? so the modules are done only for uh, business perspective okay so when it, when they are selling in the service now if they want to if if the business says that you know what i want to cater in itsm so they will just sell this much to them if they say you know what i want itsm and itom both then they will go for licensing that they will say that okay fine i'll give you itsm freely and for itom this much is the cost are you ready to take it and it depends on the uh, yeah who invented sort of the mathematical rules is harder to follow along with mathematical claims so when you have bezier curves or curves i'm really not able to hear you properly um, could you could you please ask the question again or you can Uh, could, could you please ask the question again? I was really not able to get, get it. Yeah, I have a question regarding the certification. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, is it possible to? I have heard that you can uh, write this exam in house also, like uh, using an external webcam. Do you have any idea yes. about it? Okay. Yes, you can actually uh, do that also. That is uh, pro- recruited. Uh, pro- I'm I'm very bad in that term. I always do a mistake. Okay, Basically, no you can actually you can actually go to the center and write it down, and you, or you can have the la- in your laptop itself. But then you should okay. have an external webcam, and the webcam should be satisfying the uh, requirement specifications which is given in ServiceNow website. If you don't okay, satisfy okay. the conditions, then it will not be uh, allowing you to write the exam. So that's the reason why many people go for the center itself because it's they have all the system ready, so it's easier for them to write down. um again you should have uh, there is some installation also you should do in your laptop okay there's oh. a external webcam and there is a app which has to be installed so that they will know that you're not cheating so they'll cover everything so in that way yeah um but i had done in at home itself because i was somewhere else so i could not go for the exam center as such so one of them i did that because of the it's current corona situation yeah, I, yeah, i understand but with experience i'm saying you it's better to go to the uh, to the uh, the center and take it up because it's much okay. easier um, okay. otherwise if, if you have a small mistake also in your specifications they'll just reject it on the spot they will not give you let you take the exam it's, oh, it's frustrating okay. so yeah yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's better yeah yeah thank you so uh, i gone through the past uh, certification learning path the service now learning path so i think some of them are the uh, classroom training yeah uh, so they are also available on, on demand or only the classroom because i see only the classroom but uh, i don't know i am not able to reach to that okay so you are talking about service now inside service now itself right yeah right so few of the few whenever you see classroom it is basically paid mm-hmm. okay and uh, you have to uh, you have to pay certain amount to get into the classroom and again it depends on the availability of the classroom again if you say classroom it is it, do, it doesn't mean that you have to go to some center and then only you have to go for the classroom it could be a, a web conference also and they treat that also as classroom but the thing is that they, whenever you see classroom it is chargeable and that's the reason why you don't get it okay? if you pay the amount then you will get inside no problem okay guys this was an interesting session i i, I love that you all asked questions i felt that okay fine you all are interested in the webinar i'm really happy with that so guys again as i said you can to conclude the whole thing 
If you want to have any trainings, you can contact the Mind Magic and uh, they will ask you about which training do you want. They can give you an individual trainings also. It could be an admin training, developer training, implementation training, or it could be an ATF also. I can give a, a separate one for ATF. Also. Okay. With that, it was a nice session. We got a overlook of all the modules in short. So the Thank webinar you. was good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. With that, let's just conclude the meeting. Thanks a lot, guys, for uh, attending my webinar and be safe. Be at home. Okay. Yes. Okay then. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.